Okay, UK River Landscapes, uh, extreme weather, 2009 Cumbrian floods. Here's your spec, a recent extreme weather event in the UK to illustrate causes, socio-economic environmental impacts, good old three, the triumvirate, and finally, how management strategies can reduce the risk. So, a little bit of an anatomy of a disaster first, what happened? So, in terms of the causes, let's split them into good old traditional human and physical. The human, well, urbanization in any catchment leads to a lot of runoff, and particularly in places like Cockermouth and Keswick, increased amounts of impermeable surfaces, which led to an increased amount of runoff, which of course meant more water getting into the river, increased discharge rather than it going into stores and places like that. Secondly, humans block sewers. Once the sewers are blocked and the water's got nowhere to go, it rises up and brings with it any floating detritus from the sewers. You know what I mean by a floater. And this happened in particular in Elliot Park, which is a district of Keswick. And finally, dredging. Dredging is the action of scraping the bottom of a river and therefore allowing water to flow faster through it. Unfortunately, the rivers had not been dredged for many years, which of course reduced the river's carrying capacity, which increased the chances of floods. Okay, so you've got all that human stuff just ready to kick off. And then down came the rain. Uh, very high volume of water, through, through 31 centimetres over a 24 hour period. That's about that much in 24 hours. That's a lot of water. Uh, and all of that water has to go somewhere. What caused all that water? Well, there's something called a warm conveyor. Storms that come in over the mid Atlantic pick up very, very, very warm moisture because of the North Atlantic drift. They hit the uh, west coast of Britain and they hit the orographic barrier of the mountains, the Cumbrian mountains. The air is forced to rise when it hits mountains because air can't blow through mountains. As air rises it cools, as it cools its ability to hold water as vapour goes down, condensation occurs, clouds form, precipitation forms. So you've got this really wet air forced to rise and cool giving you a massive amount of rainfall. 31.4 centimetres in 24 hours. It's a heck of a lot of water that's got to go somewhere. And then in addition, we already had saturated ground. So we'd had a long period of large amounts of rainfall. So we'd had infiltration and percolation, which meant the water table had come all the way up to the surface. Where's the rest of the water going to go? Already beneath the ground, the water's travelling into the local rivers, and then up comes this extra water. It can't go into the ground. It's got to flow over the ground, flooding. In addition, we've got very steep slopes, so the water can't just sit there, and it therefore came crashing down into the rivers Derwent and, and Cocker, giving you massive amounts of water that had to go somewhere. Uh, nicely stolen diagram, which I'll pause. You can find this resource if you look at the link underneath the YouTube clip, and you can see everything explained as I've just been talking about, and then in the red boxes, exactly what happened. So if I try and just bring out in summary exactly what happened. Here we have it. More than 1,300 homes were flooded and contaminated with sewage. When flood waters in urban areas rise up, they bring up the sewage, all the floaters, all of those needles, all of those sanitary ware, all of those turds, etc, etc, cooking. So people had to be evacuated, so we had to be evacuated from Cockermouth Town Centre, 50 people evacuated by helicopters. And of course, this means that many businesses were flooded. It takes a long time even to just dry out a business, so this led to a negative local and regional multiplier effect. Every time you hear it, you see it in bold or in italics or underlined, multiplier effect, economic impact, economic impact, because these businesses couldn't be making business, people couldn't get to them, and they had to pay to clear up. Uh, obviously, insurance helping out. At least one year for people to move back into their homes, and approximately £28,000 per house to repair the damage. So the final cost to insurance companies was £100 million. That's a massive economic burden, which of course was then fed into the insurance companies and their profits, and it meant that premiums for people the next year went up. Four bridges collapsed and 12 were closed. They had to be re-appointed and rebuilt. And when in one place, Workington, it was cut in two, so that in fact people couldn't get to any of the shops because of the bridge collapse infrastructure damage. Nice. Uh, only one casualty, a PC Bill Barker who died uh, have a heart attack in the act of trying to save uh, somebody's life. So how therefore do we try to reduce the risk next time? Management to reduce the risk. Well, the responses to the flood were straightforward. Scale now, politics, remember, 
social, economic, environmental, political. So the UK national government stepped in. They provided a million pounds for cleanup and repairs, agreed to pay for a new road bridge and for a road bridge repairs in Cumbria. Secondly, the Cumbrian Flood Recovery Fund. Now, all your examiner needs to know is that you know something other than it flooded in a place. Capital letters are really, really important because an examiner sees them and automatically thinks that is located example. So Cumbrian Flood Recovery Fund or the CFRF, if you really want to be smart, I wouldn't bother, uh, set up to raise money for the victims. And it raised a million pounds in 10 days from public donations. Network Rail opened a temporary railway station in Workington so that people who couldn't get across Workington, remember I mentioned it in the previous slide, were able to take that rail route and get along to their business. And finally, the Visit Cumbria website, uh, which normally is a tourist website, was actually used as a, as a focal point, of an online hub for people who are offering accommodation, people offering emergency support. So that's social cohesion. Again, it's very difficult in exams to remember what does that mean for social, the social aspect. Uh, social cohesion helped by the Visit Cumbria website. So lots of things in there. What about looking forward to reduce the future flood risk? So in Cockermouth, they spent £4.4 million on a management scheme to try to reduce the risk next time. This included new flood defences, uh, which were supposed to halt the spread of the river, channeling the river rather than letting it flood. The river wanted to flood, but of course, if you've built next to the river and it costs a lot of money to protect those and to repair and £28,000 per house, then you want some new flood defences. Otherwise, you're not going to vote for that council, I assure you. The funding came from government mainly and also from local contributors uh, and that tended to be the local district council that paid for it. Fine, or penultimately, sorry, the river was dredged more regularly so that they wouldn't have that condition before where the natural drainage system was being ponded up leading to increased risk. And then finally, new embankments, new levees were used to increase the channel capacity. Nice, simple. Just like levees do naturally when there's a flood, they actually built up new banks uh, and added in new floodgates at the backs of houses, which basically meant instead of the water coming down and spreading into the houses, in fact, these barriers were put to almost like safety barriers of, of a riverbank, and these new flood defences um, have been successful in recent events. So what kind of exam question you can get? Here's, here's the only one that we can find from the sample assessment material. The weather of the UK is becoming more extreme. Use evidence to support this statement. That's a cracker, that's three levels. You'll find it on the AK website. You'll also find the mark scheme. I suggest you have a look at that. It's the only indicator we've got. And finally, as I've said before, if you get through this case study and you want to do a bit more revision, do a search on Kahoot for F case study, and you'll also find the resource available in the link that's down below this video. Good luck, young Jedi.